All right, boys and girls, and we are back. Uh, your OG hosts, uh, Steve Thomas and Dicey Santa, and my handsome co host, Matt Record, M Record 21, for another IDP Plus podcast episode for all the fine, degenerate IDP folks uh, screaming for content in, in the depths of spring here, early spring. So uh, we're going to give it to them, Matt. We are you and we love you. Uh, thanks for listening. A lot's happened since the last time that we we spoke on this lovely podcast, namely a whole bunch of free agency. So what yeah. we're going to look to do today is talk through some of our favorite uh, offensive and defensive, really hitting that IDP plus part of the pod yeah. here, uh, those signings, like things we like, things we don't like, you know, just kind of talk through it at a high level uh, to get us into this, you know, at end of March, uh, end of March grayness. I don't know if the weather's like, uh, what the weather's like for you, but like it's kind of gray outside. So we might as well talk football. Yeah. Yeah. So it, there was so much going on with free agency. I feel like, uh, you know, we kind of just wanted to wait for all the, the waters to calm down a little bit here. So we're jumping in. Uh, right. To, we're going to start with quarterbacks. Fun little position. We'll keep a focus on Superflex because if you are watching this, you are probably playing some sort of IDP Superflex League. So we're just going to highlight some of the names um, from each position. So obviously the uh, the crown jewel of the entire free agent class, I would say, this year, Matt, was Kirk Cousins. And, uh, you know, he left for for warmer weather there in Atlanta, uh, although Minnesota plays in a dome. But still, uh, yeah, I mean, I think everyone's really excited for this signing for fantasy, not only for Cousins himself, right, but all the ancillary pieces. Yeah, to me, Cousins is still the Cousins we you know, sort of expected from a production standpoint, like you're mm-hmm. super stoked having him as your QB2 with QB1 upside. Like, obviously doesn't do a whole lot with his legs. But look at his surrounding cast. Like, that's the story there, right? Like, all of these weapons that Atlanta's been accumulating, you know, Drake London, uh, Kyle Pitts, Bajon Robinson. Like, this is a real quarterback. This is a real NFL quarterback, you know, not like a, oh, a prospect that could turn into a – this is a established yeah. quarterback that, in theory – in theory, will make everyone relevant. <laughs> so the question obviously will be, um, who does he who does he vibe with, right? Like yeah. people are projecting Drake London is going to be the yeah. new Justin Jefferson. I think that's a little hot for me <laughs> uh, without actually seeing anyone play any games. Uh, yeah. But do I think uh, opposing defenses having to uh, accommodate or plan for a real life quarterback could help Bajon Robinson get to the next level? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, someone that, you know, ha- has thrown two yeah. tight ends uh, well, right? Like, yeah. does that make Kyle Pitts, you know, actually maybe a top 10 tight end? Like, for real this time? <laughs> like, maybe. <laughs> it can only help. It can only help. Yeah. I Obviously, people are, are really hot in the streets for, for this. Um, yeah. So I like to be a little bit of a wet blanket. It's like, let's tone it down a little bit. Uh, but also, it can only be good. That makes sense. I'm with you there. I'm very, I'm definitely upgraded and excited for the Bijans, the Pitts, and the London chairs and whatnot. But let's, yeah, let's not just plug in Kirk Cousins for uh, for Justin Jefferson type production from him uh, for for a guy like London, you know. But uh, yes, it's going to be very interesting to see who earns the targets uh, from Cousins this year. I also feel like people are going to jump and overdraft Cousins himself, especially in Superflex, because of the, you know, perceived weapons upgrade and stuff. I'd probably, you know, uh, warn against doing that. I wouldn't jump him up too crazy. He's probably still hovering right around that top, like, 12 to 14-ish tier. Uh, he would be a great QB, too, if you can grab him even in the third. But honestly, if I punt and grab him as my first QB in the third, I'm more than happy with that deal. <laughs> 100%. All right. Um, oh, boy. I knew that was going to happen. AD, we've got a guest today. Um, the other, I feel like the only other, like, big names that are almost worth talking about here, of course, Baker returns to Tampa Bay, so that's great. Um, I think everyone, I think fantasy managers who've had Baker are very excited for that. Uh, my Chris Godwin shares don't love that so much, but hopefully we'll – We'll sh- spread the ball a little bit uh, more there in Tampa Bay this year. Um, but the only guy who's got, like, starting appeal at the second uh, is Sam Darnold, who takes over for Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. Uh, I know a lot of people were hanging on to him, you know, backing up Brock Purdy and whatnot. So you got a free starter there. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully Justin Jefferson won't see a gigantic 
decrease in fantasy production. You know, Sam Darnold's not as terrible, I think, uh, as people make him out to seem. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if there's – if you want to keep going with Darnold, there's anyone else there from this list. <laughs> yeah, and obviously, you know, not knowing all the pieces of the puzzle that are going to be – or that is what people are going to do in the draft – uh, you know, it's hard yeah, to tell for some many of these people if they're going to be starting, which yeah, they could be. I, like, yeah. like I'm looking at Jacoby Brissett with the Pats, mm-hmm. obviously as the, the as the Pats fan here. But like, there's a real world that he's not starting Week One, um, right. uh, or you know, the Sam Darnolds of the world. Like, there's some talk that maybe yeah. the Vikings want to trade up and grab a quarterback. Which, if they do that, it'll be hard not to play him right away. Um, so yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think you nailed it. The big story for me is the Baker Mayfield uh, established mm-hmm. Mike Evans connection. Um, yeah. you know, the, the Bucks running back a lot of the same team there. So, um, yeah, I don't know if there's anyone else we really have to talk about. I mean, Drew Locke said he might be able to compete for a starting spot. I, I, I mean, eh. if you're a Daniel Jones manager, you might as well try to get Locke because one of them is going to play. But yeah, uh, are yeah. they going to put up stats? Probably not. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to jump to a defensive position then, Max. So we're going to go um, – to interior defenders or defensive tackles. So, oh, I want to get rid of quarterbacks. All right. So the big names were Chris Jones, Justin Matabuke, Christian Wilkins, uh, and Leonard Williams, I would say, were the top names from this list here. So three out of four of those names re-signed with the teams they played their, their last games with in 2023 this year. So not a ton of super exciting action. So we can start with Christian Wilkins, who I was shocked. Uh, that the Dolphins let let go to, to the Vegas Raiders, man. What the heck? For real, makes no sense. Obviously, he's one of the, you know, long-time studs of the deep T position. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love it. I love the move for the Raiders. They're going kind of all in. I mean, you're pairing Christian Wilkins with Max Double X yeah. Crosby there, which you have to love that if you're a Raiders fan because your defensive line is going to be stout both on the inside and out. Uh, I do think... Um, projecting a big increase in production from Wilkins is a little bit of a fool's errand. Uh, You know, Wilkins has played alongside elite edge rushers before, you know, I mean, Jalen Phillips for that stretch this year, um, you know, Bradley Chubb had a bit of a run there uh, with the Dolphins, you know, so he's played with really good players before. Um, So I think we can expect, I mean, obviously Max Crosby is at a different, different level, right? Um, but again, not to be a wet blanket, I've seen some people being like, Christian Wilkins to the moon because it's him and Max. It's like, there's only so many sacks and so many tackles to go around. I think we can predict very similar production, which is still, if you're in a DT required league, you know, top 10, the top five upside sort of player. But I don't think that, oh, now that Aaron Donald is retired, now Christian Wilkins is going to jump up to that number one spot. <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about the, that because – the thing with Christian Wilkins was always he's a super high tackle floor guy, and then any sort of sacks he gives you are sort of cream on cream on top, uh, cherry on top. And last year he just had a career best in sacks. Is it you know is Vegas going to deploy him in a similar manner? Is he going to have the opportunity for sacks? He's going to be expected to be more uh, run stuffer and whatnot. So I'm yeah I'm I'm kind of taking a pessimistic approach at least for the fact of him growing his stats i think maybe this past year in miami was a career year and all-time you know production year for idp points that we could very easily see from wilkins um so i'm hoping not a huge decrease but the sacks are obviously the wild card for those interior guys every year but now with the change of scenery change of scheme i'm a, i just i want to see it a little bit i'm probably gonna be a tad bit lower on wilkins and rankings and uh my eagerness to go get him, especially in the best ball drafts and whatnot, as the, as the season goes forward there. So uh, the other three guys of the top four, Chris Jones comes back to Kansas City on a massive, massive deal. Uh, we've talked about him for fantasy before. We're, I think we're kind of on the same page in that he's not really a tackle four guy at all. He gives you most of his production with sacks, so I don't see a whole lot changing there. No, you know, Great that he's secured uh, on that team and in that role, but – uh, probably isn't moving up or down too far in rankings wise. Uh, Matt Buke, um, he, he did come back to Baltimore, right? Yeah, he's coming back to Baltimore. Sure uh, franchise, okay, so franchise tag, no long term deal. So he may have to do it again this year. So I do like Matt Buke's chances of repeating here or at least giving us another really strong season. And then the other big, big name was Leonard Williams coming back to Seattle, but. 
at this point in his career, I think he's sort of a, you know, gap run stuffer type guy. So decent enough for tackle floor, but isn't going to give you a whole lot of big play upside. So if you're looking for a deal three or four to just solidify your rotation for that solid, like six to 12 points every week, Leonard Williams is a perfect guy with that. And there's nothing wrong with a guy like that. He's almost like the opposite of Chris Jones. Chris Jones is going to give you these big ceiling weeks and tiny, tiny floor one point weeks, whereas Williams will usually get you at like six, seven, eight points a week. So um, that's great. So any any of those guys you want to touch base on or anyone else that uh, sign anywhere exciting? <laughs> um, kind of let's look up some stats real quick here. Uh, looking up uh, Matabu K. How many tackles did he have? Okay. So he was in 60. Kind of tells my story. Yeah. He had 56 combined tackles um, and 13 sacks this last year. So obviously he got the payday. Um, for me, <laughs> when I'm looking for it, really depends on what your strategy is, right? Um, how many people you're starting, obviously. Uh, this is a, a classic candidate for me of regressing back to the mean uh, from what he's established uh, he is as a player. Obviously, the Ravens uh, have shown that they really like him. They wouldn't have franchise tagged him and paid him that much money if they don't like him. Uh, R.I.P. Travis Jones shares uh, out there. Uh, you're a real one if you understand. Um, but I think his sacks are going to come down and his tackle floor is not necessarily as high as you want to invest a big front round pick in. So, I guess, I'm just being the wet blanket today. Uh, he's one of those guys where if you're, especially if you're in redraft, um, don't overpay for for him. I think he's not going to be that same elite player because he's so reliant on sacks. Um, if you're in dynasty, okay, maybe a sell high. Maybe a sell high, unless you haven't had a really cheap deal, right? Then like, yeah, absolutely ride that. If you're in win now, keep it. Um, so yeah, just want to touch on him. Uh, in terms of everyone else, I, there's not really any other names that super interest me from an idp relevant standpoint um i don't know if you have yeah. anyone now just um i totally agree on my buke um i mean we see this every year right guys that pop out of nowhere my buke was like not being talked about or on the deepest of deep sleeper lists um so we want to try to find that next guy and and you know don't pay up for the my Bukies as well, who've done it one out of five years or four years in the NFL. Um, let someone else pay that price tag and, and just hoping for those stats to be exactly from 2023 into 2024, which we know rarely ever happens, right? Even with the extreme talents that have been pegged for day one. So uh, the only last guy, Javon Kinlaw, um, I believe he came back. Oh, he's on the Jets. Okay. I thought he came back. Somebody... Um, but he, he's a younger guy, Ken Law, who uh, was injured through a lot of his career in San Francisco. Uh, so maybe Robert Saleh can, you know, figure him out and get him in a, an opportunity to succeed. He still just got to really play, play snaps. Um, you see these PFF grades are terrible over the past few years, but he's also been really limited in this game. So he's just a former high draft capital guy who's certainly still got potential and hopefully the the change of scenery might be able to uh, to fix him. So he was a round one, 14th overall selection in 2020. So he's got some draft capital. He obviously has talent. Um, so we'll see if the new home can can make him kind of one of these new breakout guys. So um, Fletcher Cox, of course, retired. And Grover Stewart back to uh, Indianapolis. He's kind of like a Leonard Williams 2.0 or a poor man's yeah. Leonard Williams. So solid. All right, before we switch to our next offensive position, we just want to talk about the sponsor of the show. So uh, Trophy Smack is a is a prize partner of ours. Um, I know we've got – oh, you've always got your belt. I've got this handy-dandy ring that I like to show every time. I won from uh, one of the fancy football expo drafts that I was at. Matt's got a sweet, sweet belt over there. So our official sponsor of the pod, Trophy Smack, if you head over there – uh, use is it still IDP guys, Matt? I it's believe, still right? IDP guys for now. Cool. Yeah, okay. uh, use code can... IDP guys to win or get a free championship ring with any purchase oh, yeah. of a trophy uh, or one of those sweet belts. So they do it all. It's not just fantasy football. It's totally customizable. So I know fantasy baseball is starting up. Your fantasy basketball leagues are probably Ooh. wrapping up. Um, so really anything and everything you could possibly want, uh, fantasy football, paraphernalia, or wall art related. 
they got it. Head on over there, support them like they've supported us. Uh, really quality products. So uh, get on over there. Yeah, so much fun stuff over there. We love Trophy Smack. Thanks for sponsoring the show, guys. All right. Um, we're going to flip back to offense and we will go. I'm going to go to running backs, okay? Um, so there was running backs was a huge, it was a monster list of names for free agency. I, I feel like we don't often see this many big names uh, hitting free agency at one time. So guys like Saquon Barkley to the Eagles, Josh Jacobs to the Packers, Derrick Henry to the Ravens, Tony Pollard to the Titans, Austin Eckler to the Commanders, DeAndre Swift to the Bears. Saw Devin Singletary uh, take over for the for Saquon in the New York on the Giants. We had Gus Edwards heading to the Chargers in a potential uh, bell cow role for freaking Gus Edwards over there. Uh, did AJ Dillon come back to Green Bay? I believe he did, oh, or he hasn't signed anywhere yet. So AJ Dillon remains unsigned. J.K. Dobbins unsigned, and then the the last like I guess important name Zach Moss. To Cincinnati as uh, as they traded Joe Mixon to the to the Houston Texans. So not on this list. Joe Mixon also uh, changing scenery to Houston. So that was a bunch of names. Rap, give me some of the one of your favorites or so that that you like to see. Uh, give me a favorite and then a, a loser, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, much to my chagrin, giving your team some flowers. I think <laughs> I think I think Barkley to the Eagles makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, I think the Eagles. I think they recognize that having Jalen Hurts run so much uh, uh, is bad business decision. If he's the guy, all it's going to take is one bad injury, and things are looking really bad there. Um, yeah. So I think the signing of Barkley and the money that he got is an indication that he's going to, you know, be the guy. Um, as well as, you know, with Jason Kelsey retiring. I don't know if the tush push is going to be as uh, effective necessarily. Uh, so I, I people are worried, and I think partially rightfully so, about, you know, Barkley getting down to the goal line and not scoring. Uh, but, you know, Miles Sanders had a huge year a couple years ago there uh, for y'all. Um, and then, you know, DeAndre Swift was pretty effective last year as well. So I, I like Barkley's spot there uh, quite a bit. The Eckler situation, I don't necessarily... Uh, Love, I mean, he's whether justifiably or not, to me, he's always an injury risk. Uh, he's going to a team that's bereft of talent uh, outside of a few players on that offense. So I, I just, I don't know. I just don't really feel it. I don't really feel it with Eckler. Um, kind of similarly with Tony Pollard. I was kind of down on him last year. People were mad at me that I was down, but I ended up being right. Like, I, I think we, we've seen what Pollard's um, ceiling is, and I just don't think he's the guy. So, yeah, what, what do you got? Yeah, I'll start with my bad news first. Um, I think people going nuts for the Gus Edwards landing spot should chill. And yes, it looks great. And if I was a pre, if I'm a already uh, have Gus Edwards on my roster manager, I'm, I'm ecstatic. But I'm also not someone going out and paying up for Gus Edwards because of the landing spot either. Either, um, I think we know that this, this they're a prime team to take one of the top rookie running backs, and we know that Jim Harbaugh likes to run committees as well. So I just don't. I I, I don't know. I you know he had 800 yards, 13 touchdowns, I believe, for Baltimore. Um, I, I would actually be pretty surprised if he met. Uh, those numbers this this year, I could see a big regression. Maybe the same yardage, but I don't know if the touchdown opportunity is going to be there for for Gus Bus. Um, with the Chargers, kind of in a rebuild <laughs> almost. So right now, I really just think he's a body. They have returning guys um, that people were goo goo gaga over in drafts, rookie drafts, just a couple of years ago. So um, I'm pushing. And like I said, if I have Gus Edwards, I'm thrilled. But I'm also not, if I need a running back, I'm not targeting Gus Edwards in Dynasty at all. Um, kind of the same way about the, I'm, I've almost got two bad ones here. Uh, DeAndre Swift heading to Chicago. Um, uh, Khalil um, Herbert, Herbert is still there. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm sure we'll see some sort of uh, timeshare there as well. So not totally in love with DeAndre Swift. I guess I'll give Josh Jacobs some flowers. I haven't been big in on him. Um, for most of his career at his price tag. Hopefully his price tag has gone down, especially if they maybe do bring AJ Dillon back. I think that would be great for the perception of his value decreasing, even though I don't think it affects his value at all. I also think he, 
I'm probably going to be higher on him than I have been in more recent years because I think he'll have a bell cow role there in a, in a really nice offense. So that's that's my thoughts on running back. Um, all right. We'll go to um, the next defensive position. Uh, let's hit... Um, let's do safeties next. Uh, we're going to probably skip cornerbacks because for fantasy purposes, mm. they don't, I hate to be dismissive, but uh, safeties, we had um, Antoine Winfield come back home, Kyle Duggar stay home, Cameron Curl went to... Yeah, I thought he went to the Rams. Home. Pretty sure The Rams, there. that is right. Yeah, yeah good call. Uh, Xavier McKinney to my Eagle. No, it was That's going the to Packers. Be. That's right. I got tricked Packers. that day. It originally was the Eagles. Now he's in he's in Green Bay. Uh, Geno Stone has to Cincinnati. Julian Blackman came home, I believe. Uh, why aren't these filled in? Um, Jordan Whitehead, I believe, came back to Tampa Bay. Gardner yeah. Johnson is the one who came back home to Philly. Uh, see a lot here that else that I care. Oh, Jeremy Chin went to Washington. I think a lot of people are excited for hopefully a, a, <laughs> a resurgence in his career um, in Washington if he'll actually just play snaps and whatnot. Um, Eddie Jackson released and I do not believe has signed anywhere. So sure we could be seeing the end of a career there pretty much. Um, so yeah, those are the bigger names. So most of the big names came home. I guess Cameron Curl to the Rams um, is probably our most exciting one, right? Yeah, I'm super into it because, I mean, the Rams kind of overperformed last year. I mean, if you remember us talking almost a year ago, right, it's like about Ernest Jones being, look at the Rams, there's literally no one else, right? I mean, him and Donald. Uh, obviously, people performed pretty well uh, there. But you look at their defensive backfield situation right now, there's not a whole lot going on. So I kind of like Curl. I mean, all reports, of course, they are at this point in the year out of camp are uh, like, oh, he, we're excited to use this such a versatile guy all over the, you know, field and utilize his strength. So it's all positive. I like the fit. Um, he's kind of been a sleeper candidate that we keep hyping up in the community. Last year, he played fine. He didn't end up being that top five guy, but, you know, he was fine. Um, so I kind of like that fit quite a bit. I'm really excited about Xavier McKinney in Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay has been just bereft at talent. Uh, back there. Uh, McKinney's easily the best uh, real-life NFL player they've had there in a minute. Um, so excited for how he's going to be utilized uh, on that defense. Um, yeah, looking at these other names, you know, obviously Antoine Winfield staying in the same spot uh, is huge. Like, he's probably top five, you know, at this point there uh, in terms of safeties. Um, but in terms of other folks... Yeah, I mean, Whitehead was always a nice streamer last year from the Jets. You know, the fact the Bucks went and got him, I think he's still going to be the same kind of uh, IDP type of player. Um, yeah, and then Duggar, you know, the Pats slapped the transition tag on him. I haven't seen anything that anyone's actually tried to sign him yet. Uh, so it, it says, you know, yeah, he's staying with the Pats, but we don't quite know until someone you know slaps a figure on him uh, there. So other than the Duggar question mark, I think all of the real – people that have a chance to be extremely um, IDP relevant. We kind of already know and sort of talked about. I mean, yeah, I suppose uh, the Jeremy Chin is just a wild one. Uh, wild one. Do you have any feelings on him? Yeah, I mean, the the feeling has to be positive, right? I mean, he, he injured again, and then just when he came back, they just weren't letting him on the field for whatever reason. Probably, I mean... I guess he signed as a free agent, so it wasn't even to preserve and trade him, as I was originally going to say. So who yeah. knows? I don't I know mean, why. Re I think replaces, he was just... yeah, replaces Curl, who is productive um, yeah. on that defense. But yeah, a bit of a bit of a scratch up ticket. It it was totally weird why he wasn't playing um, last year. So uh, that's the only because I hopefully he hasn't actually lost anything, and that was just the inept coaching staff, but yeah, you got to feel nothing but, but positivity. Now the only issue is in front of him, they have, well, we'll get to it, but Washington signed two studs um, <laughs> at linebacker. So I, I don't know how much is going to be funneled up uh, to Chin uh, for opportunity wise. So he might be living and dying by the big play next year. That is one concern. Um, 
I do love, like you were saying, Curl in, in with the Rams, yes, because of all the one linebacker they play. Complete opposite there. We could have way more opportunities funneling up the Curl uh, from just a tackle standpoint um, alone. And we know the Rams can score points on offense. You know, if a healthy offense returns, could be shootout city, could be lots of opportunities. So I'll probably be the highest I've been on Curl in, in many years here um, this year with the with the change this year. And then Gardner Johnson coming home to the Eagles where he had his best, you know, fantasy year ever. You know, gotta love that as well. So definitely excited uh, for that as well. The Cincinnati group right now, because Von Bell also returned to Cincinnati. So we've now got Von Bell, Geno Stone, Jordan Battle, and Dax Hill. So we've got four guys for basically three positions, basically two positions. Um, so a lot of us are wondering what's going to go on there. The initial thought would be that maybe they're going to cut or trade Mike Hilton as their slot corner and move Dax Hill into that role and now do more of the traditional three safety share uh, between Bell, Battle, and Stone. Hopefully it's Bell and Stone battling for free safety and we get a lot of Jordan Battle uh, on the field in the quote unquote strong safety uh, role there. So that's going to be the initial hope. <laughs> but if that doesn't play out down the season, then, then that situation is going to be incredibly frustrating. So just be wary. Um, I, yeah. um, all right. So we'll go to our next offensive position. Um, what did I do? Quarterbacks and. Uh, You've done QBs and backs. RBs. So we'll do we'll jump to tight ends then. We'll do we'll knock off the smaller positions first and then get to the larger ones. So um the tight end, we had Dalton Schultz return to Houston, Hunter Henny return to New England, Noah Fant return to Seattle. I think we were looking for yeah. every anywhere but um, Seattle return there. Uh Gerald Everett heads to Chicago. Uh, Colby Parkinson signed a pretty nice deal in Los Angeles with the Rams. Uh, the rest of these names, uh, Gusecki's in Cincinnati, but how many times are we going to fall? I mean, it, it's got to be his best potential spot that he's yeah. been at ever, but we know this, uh, you know, everyone's the say for Smith and it ended up being Tanner Hudson most of the year. So yeah, Cincinnati tight ends don't, I'm going to say don't fall for the Mike Gusecki trap, but if you have him, you're feeling like, come on, this is the year. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. What to, uh, Janu uh, to Miami, and then, yeah, Irv Smith went somewhere. Oh, yeah, Kansas City, and people are like, oh, yes, yes. Like, come on. Don't no. do not do that to yourself again, guys. So, yeah. um, who, who else do you want to touch on and play that? There's <laughs> really not a whole lot to talk about. I mean, look at these names, right? Like, yeah. none of these are big names, yeah. to be honest. Like, I mean – God, I mean, I guess Hunter Henry, like the the Patriots have no weapons, and like yeah. he was relatively effective last year when we happened to find our way in the red zone, uh, to being uh, <laughs> you know kind of like a nice little safety blanket uh, right. for the Pats for whomever starting, whether it be Brissett or whatever rookie we grab. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Gerald Everett was a perfectly fine uh, what tight end fifteen or so this yeah. year. I don't love him going to the Bears because, uh, no. you know, Cole Komet really took a step up this year as we yeah. all kind of wanted. So kind of more like the back role there. And they're going to they're gonna have a rookie QB, which, you know, other than the C.J. Stroud example, like they're really up and down all year. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I don't know. Not, not much is exciting or not exciting because if you're relying on any of these folks, like I don't know what to tell you about your team construction. <laughs> People were super excited about Schultz coming back to Houston. I meh, uh, somebody pulled a really good stat. Like when everyone was healthy, uh, including Dell Collins, mm -hmm. um, Robert Woods, and Dalton Schultz, he was you know earning barely like five targets a game. Uh, it was when people were were going down in injuries when he, he usually seemed to to pop off with his good game. So uh, that's, yeah, you look that's just it. The Texans are quickly becoming one of those teams where it's like, who's it going to be each week? You don't get yeah. that consistency. There's too many right. mouths to feed, so to speak. Obviously, you like Stroud delivering it to them, but sure. but like who who's it going to be? Yeah, yeah, very difficult to earn targets there, um, especially when he obviously when they are all healthy. It seems like he prefers the duo of Nico and Tank Dell there. So just be wary with your Dalton Schultz. Of course, like yeah, like you said, coming back to uh, Houston with with Stroud throwing in the rock is great. 
But if you look, you know, people are going to look back. Schultz finished T10 or T7, which is great uh, overall. But when you dig into those box scores uh, and you dig into some of the contextual stats, like I just mentioned about targets when everyone's healthy, it doesn't quite look as promising as, as you would like to think there. So just, uh, yeah, pour, pour a little uh, cold water on the Dalton Schultz there too. My favorite is, honestly, it's I, I'm sticking with Noah fan. I kind of groaned when I said he returned to Seattle um, because there's still, you know, a ton of target competition there. And unfortunately, still a Geno Smith there. However, I think Sam Howell is going to at least have an opportunity oh, uh, sure. to compete for the starting job in this in this season. So that would be great. But because, um, yeah, we saw a, resur- a, a resurgence of Logan freaking Thomas uh, with Sam Howell. So uh, I would much rather prefer Sam Howell for Noah Fant than Geno Smith. However, Colby Parkinson's gone. Will Disley's gone. So the other type, if they'll actually let him play, you know, Travis Kelsey type snaps and, and a role like he, he is athletic enough and talented enough to do, then I think. You know, no fan, the arrow's only pointing up. I think we could kind of see like a Evan Ingram type arc there too, uh, where he, you know, people were down on him for, for, and then, you know, he had a resurgence to his career as well. So Fant would be the other guy I'm a little excited about. Oh, quickly, Colby Parkinson to the Rams. I was really loving holding on to my Davis Allen shares, uh, the rookie tight end from last year, fifth rounder, uh, especially once Higby went down. It appears Higby's you know, in trouble for even the start of the season. So I still am going to, I think, bet on Davis Allen at his price. Uh, People are going to take Parkinson because of the money, you know, but I don't quite care as much about that as uh, just talent evaluation. And I think if Davis Allen is allowed to compete for the number one tight end spot, he'll have uh, a better year than than Parkinson this year. So, um yeah, all right. So that's it for tight ends. We will go to everyone's favorite linebackers. Now we're going to talk traditional middle linebackers. If anybody's a you know kind of a question mark as an edge rusher, uh, that'll be coming up next after wide receiver. So uh, we had a ton of freaking changes. So let's start just hitting the names. Patrick Queen to Pittsburgh. Uh, really nice landing spot there. Frankie Louvu to Washington. When we hit another name, you're going to see why I don't love that landing spot for him. Levante David back to Tampa Bay. Jordan Brooks to Miami. Uh, Bobby Wagner also to Washington. So that kind of throws the uh, the, the water onto the Frankie Louvu, who did sign first, too. So people were super excited about uh, Frankie Louvu at first and then womp womp. Um, Jerome Baker to Seattle. Um there's opportunity there. So uh, Aziz Al-Shair to Houston. So that's a really nice one. We're definitely going to talk about him. Uh, Devin White went to Philly. Josie Jewell with uh, Carolina. Eh. Uh, Drew Tranquil six with the Chiefs as Willie Gay hit the uh, hit the bricks to go to New Orleans. Uh, Jordan Hicks, Cleveland. A lot of people are really excited there. Oh, the uh, yeah, Tyrell Dodson also in Seattle. So any uh, deep league holders of Terrell Dotson uh, may have gotten paid off there. I'm not even clicking on Nicholas Morrow because I don't care. Uh, he's terrible. Cody Barton, I thought signed somewhere, but it's not updated. So I might need some help on that one. <laughs> um, the Cleveland guys are gone. Taki, Taki Taki's in New England. He's a yes, deeper sir. name that I like. But not sure how much opportunity to get. Oh, yeah, Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray takes over for Aziz Alshair in Tennessee this year. So a lot of similar running backs, a lot of big names, all kind of played musical teams there and a lot of opportunity here. So anybody uh, particular that jumps out to you that you want to talk about first? I mean, a couple. So I, I really like yeah. the... A queen signing there yeah, in Pittsburgh. Huge. Like Pittsburgh's been searching for a really nice linebacker. Queen's obviously very versatile. Had a really good year this year. You know, definitely one of those where I think the the change of scenery can be good for him. Um, yeah. He kind of flourished when you know Roquan Smith showed up. Um, so you yeah. know, I I, I I like the Queen signing. I, I'll probably be higher on him than most, um, even with the change of scenery there um yeah Aziz Al Shair with the Texans like I love what Huge. the Texans have done 
uh, in their free agency, they're going for it. And I mean, they have what four years left of CJ Stroud on his rookie deal. So this is the time. Um, mm-hmm. Alshay year made himself some money this year with the Titans. Um, mm-hmm. And now he gets a, uh, you know, talking about musical chairs of linebackers, you know, a couple years ago, it was the Browns. Who's going to be the guy uh, this yeah. last year was the Texans where we couldn't make heads or tails with, you know, uh, uh, playtime percentages or anything. Right. right? Um, yeah, it was all they go the and get a constant professional in, in Al Shair. So I think yeah. he plays uh, a pretty, has a real big opportunity here to be an LB two solid every week, just solid tackle floor guy mm-hmm. um, there with the Texans. I was really excited about about that, and I do think the Drew Tranquil signing is is worthwhile there in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that Willie Gay is gone, um, yeah. the, you know you can never predict health. Uh, we expect Nick Bolden to be more of the Nick Bolden from a couple of years ago in terms of play time. Obviously, he was injured last year, which kind of impacted some stuff. Um, the Chiefs have proven that they don't love playing. Uh, Leo mm-hmm. Chanel a whole lot. Um, yeah. So they, they liked having their two linebackers uh, just being out there. So uh, the fact that they kept Tranquil and, you know, Gay is gone, I, I think he's going to be a solid LB4 slash LB3 uh, mm-hmm. each and every week. So um, the arrows pointed up for him. Yeah. Um, a guy I touch on, I forgot to mention, Blake Cashman heads to Minnesota. Uh, so all of our Ivan Pace shares are crying because – but so – I was talking, I was tweeting back and forth with Sicoli the, the night it happened. And, you know, yeah, he kind of, you know, put the dagger into into Ivan Pace. And I was kind of like, well, I think this is a competition from the very start. Yes, Cashman got the big contract. But, again, like, we've seen money. It doesn't mean as much as people think, I think, no. uh, once those guys step on the field. So, if Cashman's not picking up the system, has a bad camp, like all things that could be very possible, of course, injury, but we never root for that. Um, then Ivan Pace is very much still alive. So I would not go dumping Ivan Pace if you can afford to hold him in your in your dynasty offseason here until we, you know, get a, a clearer picture and, and possibly a, a you know actual denoted starter, like it was Jordan Hicks's job last year um until the injury hit. So but, you know, Pace now has a full year in this system. Cashman's coming in brand new. So um, two-headed monster there. I mean, people are going crazy for Cashman, thinking it's going to be Jordan Hicks 2.0. And I'm kind of back here like, eh, maybe not, maybe not right out of the gate here. So I'm being a little more cautious with that situation. I do love the Al Shair landing spot. Uh, Hicks now to Cleveland as sort of the de facto 1A to uh, Jeremiah owusu Koromoa's 1B. Uh, hopefully it will still allow Koromoa to do, uh, you know, be a, more free out there and for fantasy purposes, give us some of those those big plays. But I do now wonder about the tackle floor. Is Jordan Hicks uh-huh. just going to eat everything up? Um, so, yeah, interesting there. Um, I, I don't know. I'm always kind of like weary on those Cleveland guys to begin with. So <laughs> I finally came around on JOK, but now with this signing, um, you know, yeah, it, it can go either way for it can go either way for me because I think part of me is rooting for JOK to succeed, and now yeah. that you know there's a more established, I mean, because where he became a big deal in last year is when they let him start playing all around the field, right? Like yeah. he was starting to rush a whole lot more and was very effective there. I mean, he was a, a rock star in his playoff game, one of the mm-hmm. one that the Browns had. Um, so I'm still gonna be higher on JOK. It definitely takes a little hit. Uh, but talking about people that take a hit, I mean, who do you want from this group? Frankie Louvu, Bobby Wagner, Jam and Davis. Yeah. They're yeah. the commanders. Well, like real life it's... NFL wise, great. You got yeah. some you got some depth, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you got some 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 nice names there and some potential. But from an IDP perspective, I, I don't want to touch this. No, I know. It's it's death for Jam and Davis. It's a whole new regime. Uh, he's very much a bust at this point for being a first round pick. He's had enough time. He showed flashes. Uh, you know, we've had some good IDP games for him, but uh, on the field, the grading and the peripherals are just not that good at this point. So he's, you know, uh, he's 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 now a backup, uh, possible trade candidate. So it's it's definitely Wagner and Louvu's jobs. And we saw, you know, Barton and Davis and Barton and Hudson late in the year have decent enough games together. So I do think Bobby Wagner should go first with the tackle four being there. 
and I with the role that I assume they're giving him. And then I would want Frankie Luvu kind of where I don't know, wherever people were taking the first Washington, the first Washington guy last year. Whether I don't know, some people thought it was gonna be a Jamie Davis year, some people thought Cody Barton, but like many, many, you know, multiple rounds after Wagner. Wagner's still like a an elite tier fantasy linebacker, in my opinion, despite you know this perceived landing spot where he may have to share snaps. I mean, we 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 saw him and Jordan Brooks be perfectly fine next to each other. So I think this Washington team is looking to maybe model uh, the usage after the Wagner and Brooks years in Seattle. Um, so both were good enough, but yeah, I would stick with taking Wagner as my elite option and Luvu is like a high upside guy. Prefer him definitely more in best ball and redraft. I probably won't have much Luvu. Yeah, hundred percent. And then you toss in the addition of Jeremy Chin. You know, another guy that's yeah. going to be established to get some tackles. Yeah. And yeah, Davis is dead. Um, I mean, this has the makings of being uh, like the Bears situation last year with Tremaine Edmonds yeah. and DJ Edwards, where it's like one's going to yeah. outplay the other, and then maybe both are going to be super relevant. So yeah, good we'll call. See. Very good call. Um, yeah, I remember Luvu was all was the guy in Carolina. He he was all that they had really, and he was playing you know nor, north of 90, 92, mm-hmm. 93 percent of snaps there. I don't know if that's as much of a guarantee here in Washington. So uh, Brooks to Miami, he's pretty much the guy there. They have not brought back Baker, and David Long was very meh in his year one. So I think Brooks, yeah. I, this is great. Uh, hopefully he's fully healthy. Again, he's one of these guys that like, yeah, get some rough grading, uh, but, you know, opportunity is king. He should be a 100% player. Um, yeah, and then the Seattle guys between Dodson and who else went there? Oh, Baker went to Seattle, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Flip the yeah. coin. <laughs> People are loving it for Dodson. Again, I'm sure he'll have to fight. Uh, Baker for spots. Oh, and then Josie Jewell taking over in Carolina. Yeah, maybe we see the new Frankie Louvu there, Josie Jewell. So I don't know. Um, could be a reach. But uh, yeah, so I think for the most part, these were all good landing spots for most people. Yeah, I'd say so. I don't think anyone's uh, status changed insanely. You know, right. like, I, right. I, like it, everyone's still about the yeah. same as what they what they were, other than some of the players that uh, were on the existing teams that signed them that might have a step down uh, that were on the fence anyway. Um, one sleeper, because, of course, I, I like my Patriots sleepers, you know, so I'm talky talky. The Patriots are going to be terrible on offense, like so bad on offense that there's going to be so many snaps for, for those linebackers, and this is a new regime now, and this new regime went out and signed him, uh, right? So it's not like a Balachek guy. We know Mayo, you know, is saying it's going to be the same defense and, you know, it's going to look for the same things. But I think there's something to be said as Mayo gets his guys uh, that they're going to start playing, right? Um, similarly, and we're about to talk about Edge, so maybe this is our transition, you know, Josh Uche signing back with the Patriots. It's like maybe, you know, Mayo likes him, so he's actually going to play them. Um, versus some of the people that are established on that defense. So, uh, yeah, super deep. Don't draft him in redraft. Yeah. But, like, he's just one of those ones that's either an injury or, yeah, scheme away from being good. He's a solid tackle guy. I've always liked Taki Taki. Um, and then, yeah, Kenneth Murray taking over for Al Shair in Tennessee. Yeah, he's, he should have another yeah. chance to be – Really good, uh, good year here. So, oh, but we got to uh, talk about wide receivers first. What are we talking about? Yeah, we're gonna we're we're jumping between offense defense, so we'll knock out wide receivers. You know, yeah. Oh, here's some of the, so T Higgins stays home in Cincinnati but wants a trade. Michael Pittman stays home in Indianapolis. Mike Evans stays home in Tampa Bay. Marquise Brown to Kansas City. A lot of people are getting really excited for that. Um, hopefully he stays healthy. Calvin Ridley to Tennessee with a huge contract. Darnell Mooney to Atlanta. Gabe Davis to Jacksonville. Odell is still on sign. I believe Tyler Boyd is still on sign. Yeah. Um, Curtis Samuel to Buffalo. Kendrick Bourne stays home in New England. Uh, Shark still on sign. Michael Thomas just got released. And now these are names that we shouldn't be caring super much about. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't see anybody else worth really talking about there. So, um, yeah, the big names stayed. They were rewarded. Um, 
I, I know I moved Pittman up kind of because of it. I'm, I'm glad to see him sticking around now with a true young quarterback to develop with and in a Shane Steichen offense to develop with. I really like that for Pittman going forward here. So I'll probably be higher on him than I have been in most years. Honestly, rivaling where I've got T. Higgins at. Uh, I really see, I really like T. Higgins as a talent, but sticking around in Cincinnati, he's kind of second fiddle with targets. Uh, he's been a little frustrating. Um, outside of the one, you know, really good solid year there last year. So, um, yeah, those those are my big name guys. You got anybody you want to touch on? Yeah. So obviously, Mike Evans, perennial yeah. thousand yard guy. Um, <laughs> don't let don't let age fool you. Like he is him. Like you know exactly what he's going to do. And we have the Baker consistency. Wow. So like I got him as like a wide receiver three last year. Because we're going to fall off the clip. Now he's fine. He's Mike Evans. Um, yeah. yeah, Marquise Brown. I go back and forth on because obviously the landing spot is huge, right? Juicy. It's like, you know, who else? And, yeah. you know, what, what makes Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs so good? It's like, who else yeah. do they have? Like an aging uh, an aging Travis Kelsey, right? Yeah. Obviously, we liked what we saw from Rasheed Rice uh, yeah. last year in his rookie year. Yeah. Uh, it was like, who else do they have? It's going to be Marquise Brown. They don't, it, I think it was only a one-year deal that they signed him for. Like, he's been an injury risk. So, I guess it's a, don't overpay for him. Like, don't overpay right. for him. Like, I would say don't fall for the trap. <laughs> don't fall for it. Like, I think he's a better best ball candidate. Because I, yeah. I bet you there'll be one or two games, and probably because this is how fantasy works, week one, <laughs> week two, where he crushes it, right? Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, more of a best ball candidate for me. Uh, yeah. Ridley, again, temper expectations. Like, Tennessee, yeah. who knows who's going to start a quarterback for them. We yeah. think it's Will Levis. I don't, I don't know. Long term, though, like I don't, yeah, long term. Who knows? Like, I he's not a, <laughs> and not someone I'm super excited about. Yeah. Uh, now, Curtis Samuel, I do really like yeah. there on the Bills, right? So me uh, too. Like Samuel's always been sort of underrated uh, gadget yeah. player there for the Commanders previously, where they got him the ball in many different ways. The Bills, you know, there's a hole there. Um, yeah. They've been missing something on offense uh, from other than you know Diggs and James Cook. We thought he was Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis never happened. Not all of us. Yeah. Well, there, uh, Khalil Shaker has been inconsistent, yeah. to say the least, of staying on the field and producing. Yeah. So I kind of I, – Samuel's one of those guys I might target, you know, wide receiver four, you know, unsexy yeah. bounce back guy. Um, so I kind of like that that signing uh, from from these names. Uh, and then the yeah, last one I'll talk about, you know, Darnell Mooney on the, the Falcons. We talked yeah. about the Kirk Cousins effect, uh, but it's very quickly becoming very similar to the Texans, where it's like, who knows who's going to be the guy? Maybe yeah. it's Mooney. Like, maybe maybe he's, um, you know, takes a step. But uh, there's a lot of mouths to feed there. Uh, yeah. and, and unless Kirk Cousins putting up uh, Tom Brady 2007 staffs, you know, <laughs> not everyone is going to meet their ADP. So, uh, yeah. Again, maybe more of a best ball candidate for me. Obviously, if you're holding on to him in Dynasty, like it can only be good uh, getting out of uh, getting out of Chicago. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Very cool. All righty. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of other people. Your guy Kendrick Bourne coming back home. I think that's pretty nice. Although he's older. Um, yeah, and we know. got KJ Osborne, uh, which. Oh you know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> We always have just a bunch of wide receiver threes, right? Yeah. And we're going to probably end up with Drake May and be like, hey, throw to all these <laughs> wide receiver threes. Um, <laughs> like, if there's anyone on the Patriots offense that we signed that I'm quasi excited about, it would be uh, Antonio Gibson, to be honest. Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't had a true uh, third down running back since James White retired. Uh, and those were always my sneaky plays because they, yeah. you know, you know, security blanket, they're going to score just enough to end up being like an RB4, right? Totally. Um, so, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, Kendrick Warren's great, but again, injury stuff and who the hell is going to throw to him. Right, right. Yeah, he'll be a sneaky, sneaky ad for this year. Um, I took him to some super deep uh, startups, um, best ball uh, dynasty startups. So uh, I like him for that kind of a target, but yeah, it all count. Count on too much, and then of course I'm team bust for Gabe Davis. Oh yeah, pretty much okay. no matter where he was headed. So, <laughs> all right, we are ready for the finale of the edge rushers. So all the big edge rushing names. So Josh Allen sticks home with Jacksonville. I was a little surprised there. 
Uh, Brian Burns gets franchised and then traded to the New York Giants. Daniel Hunter heads to the Houston Texans, opposite Will Anderson. Bryce Huff to the My Philadelphia Eagles, very excited. Uh, Chase Young to the Saints. Uh, Jonathan Greenard went to Carolina? Oh, Minnesota. Greenard is in Minnesota. Um, Tommy, I believe, is signed. Or he went, he was talking to the Jets. I don't think he signed there. Uh, Zary Smith back to Cleveland. Um, Uche came back to, to uh, New England. Um, Andrew Van Ginkle heads to Minnesota. Uh, Danico Autry comes to Houston, so he switches teams. Lawrence Armstrong was among the names that the commander signed. Um, beyond that, I don't see a ton of names that I care about here. Uh, Derek Barnett sneaky comes back to Houston where he had a decent end to the year there. He was racking up some sacks. So the Eagles cast off once again, guys that leave the Eagles do, do great elsewhere. So he could be a sneaky deep guy, uh, this year, Derek Barnett returning to, to Houston there. I'm not even going to art utter the name of the former saints and then Vikings player last year who. I, a lot of us cannot quit, so I'm not going to say his name. Um, Anthony Jennings comes back home to New England. DJ Wanham, that was the name I was looking for, to Carolina. So we'll start with that. A lot of people are really excited for DJ Wanham. Uh, Carolina, they also brought the former bust of a – he was either a first or I believe a second-round pick uh, at, from the Jaguars, Claymont Chase on. Um, so those were the two big edge signings for, for Carolina there. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I like it, especially with Burns being gone now. Like, there's opportunities. Yeah. Talking about teams that we anticipate are going to be on defense quite a bit. Uh, yeah. You expect the Panthers to be there. Um, <laughs> someone's got to do something there, right? Um, so, I mean, I like it. I like it. Yeah. There's one of those things where people are so high on them, though. You know, yeah. ARDP kind of sneaks up, at least yeah. in leagues where people are paying attention. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you can only be happy about it. Yeah, yeah, I like it from an opportunity standpoint, but I'm on team. So Tom Kislinberry always digs into th these guys and you know win rates and grades and stuff like that. And Wanham, just since he's been you know came into the league, has pretty much lived off of you know we'll say like getting not potentially getting lucky with uh, getting sacks um, when he's been able to see the field, which a lot of times has been purely out of need from an injury standpoint. So uh, even his, his breakout year here with Minnesota, he kind of started the season a little slow with his snaps, you know, being in the, in the seventies and whatnot before, uh, you know, injuries and, you, you know, he had more playing time uh, to hit the, you know, more nineties, more, more frequently. So he was just racking up stats due to opportunity, which could be the very same here in Carolina. Now we're going to have to see, are they going to rotate guys? And whatnot. So I'm, yeah, people are probably going to be going crazy for Wanda because of the opportunity. So because of that, he probably isn't going to find his way on too many of my teams. But um, yeah, opportunity wise, it's it's a good it's a good sign. If you already have him on a dynasty roster, you're you're absolutely thrilled. Um, but I'm similar to what I was saying about um, going to get some of these guys because of like, like going to get Kirk Cousins, going to get Gus Edwards. Like I'm not going to get DJ Wanham because of the perceived opportunity here. Let uh, let him play out on someone else's roster, but I'm not paying up for DJ Wanham. Agreed. Same page. Um, the other exciting one is Bryce Huff coming to the Eagles. So Hassan Reddick is still kind of in limbo here with the signing for us. So we basically have younger, potentially, Hassan Reddick. Now, Huff is a, is a PFF darling in that, you know, he did just have 10 sacks, which is really nice, but he's been among top in pressure rate and uh, win rate over the past couple of years here. Uh, not totally transitioning to, to the sacks that you would like to see outside this past year. So that's why I'm... I'm, you know, not going all in quite yet on the Bryce Huff stuff, but a lot of people are, uh, you know, because we saw with the Philly D line, they did bring back Josh Sweat, so that's that's going to be helpful on the other side. But yeah, be, if you know Hassan Reddick, they have former first round pick Nolan Smith, who's you know we're obviously expecting to see the field more. He barely saw the field as a rookie. Um, so if they do bring Reddick back, so you've got now Reddick, Sweat, Smith, and Huff, 
a lot of snaps out there, a lot of mouse to feed for snaps. I'm, I'm being a little bit cautious with Puff, um, as a lot of people are really excited for, for his opportunity. Yeah, it's the same thing that's been with the Eagles defensive line, kind of similar with the the Jets one uh, defensive line, where in general there's so many, again, mouths to be, they keep saying that, but like mm-hmm. they're going to uh, play. I mean, it's great from a real life NFL perspective, right? Like mm-hmm. if you're a fan of these teams, like you have a really great defensive line. Uh, it's hard to predict any given week uh, how people are going to do. Um, so, yeah, I'm similarly excited for you as an Eagles fan that Huff is on your team, but uh, cautious when it comes to the IDP asset. Yeah. Uh, now, a player I'm not cautious about is Daniil Hunter. Yeah. I love this signing for the Texans. Absolutely love it. You know, pairing him with Will Anderson. Like this, this defense has got some horses. Uh, so I, I'm digging it. I'm digging what they're doing there. Me too. Uh, so, you know, I think last year's stats for Hunter, I think he can repeat it. I think he can. Like, it, yeah. it's going to be a classic edge position, though, where we're going to have some weeks where, you know, Will Anderson has the two sacks and Hunter does nothing. But I think uh, the opposite is going to happen uh, just as frequently. So, loving me yeah. some Daniel Hunter there. Um, otherwise, you know, yeah, Josh Allen staying on the Jaguars, I think, is only a good thing. Like, he, yeah. came out, he, he finally performed really well, you know, digging that. Um, um, trying to think of anyone else we haven't talked about yet. Um, uh, people are excited for um, Andrew Van Ginkle uh, in in Minnesota, along with Greener, was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So the Grinkle Greener uh, combination taking over for the Hunter uh, Wanham combination Wanham. of last year. Uh, do you think they're gonna they're gonna be able to fill those shoes? See, I just don't think they're as talented. Is the issue like for me? Like right. we're projecting, we're projecting them just on opportunity. Versus the talent. Uh, when I'm looking for for people, I prefer to say, "Look, they have the talent. They have good grades. They just haven't put it together, right?" Like I think I think good players see the field. Uh, bad players can see the field and be IDP relevant, but I prefer to stream right. them. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, versus like all these players, you're just gonna be waiting for a young a young buck or someone else to sort of replace them so i am less excited for them obviously they have opportunity so if i'm doing drafts now i'm doing best ball drafts now which you know some of us are you know you have to pick them based off of the opportunity but would i be shocked if the vikings went and grabbed an edge rusher you know in the second round that replaces them no yeah totally um yeah, I guess I, if I have to pick between the two, I'm picking Greenard. Uh, AVG was kind of this like Swiss Army knife specialist, so I'm interested to see what the Vikings actually plans are with him from a snap count and an alignment uh, place and, and actual, yeah, what is going to be their plan for him. So we know that Greenard is probably locked into, a, you know, pre- edge rushing role and, and nothing else because they've got Cashman and Ivan Pace to play, you know, the more traditional tackling linebacker roles. So if I'm betting on one, I'm definitely betting on Greenard. And yeah, AVG just kind of feels like he's heading back to that, like high, high impact, high leverage um, downs role player for a Minnesota and not, and not like an every down type guy. So. Um, I totally agree with Hunter. I'm really, I'm almost more excited because now he's opposite Will Anderson. I'm excited for both of them. I think they're just going to go nuts there. So yeah, I'm totally excited for that as well. We obviously don't care about Chase Young. I mean, fine. If you want to spend a later round pick, but I'm not similar to the guy's name. I didn't want to mention Marcus Davenport. Like he's entering Marcus Davenport world for me is Chase Young. Uh, He had an opportunity last year to go bananas at the end of the year and did absolutely nothing uh, on an elite defensive line where, you know, he was not being double teamed and whatnot. So I, uh, yeah, this is like a nothing burger almost for me. I'm, I'm pretty much all the way out on chase young at this point, um, no matter what. So uh, Dorrance Armstrong, the Washington is interesting. He, you know, the interior guys are still there. Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen. So maybe, maybe uh, Armstrong can can have a bit more uh, relevancy this year. Uh, prior, you know, he had a nice like eight sack season. I think like t- uh, the year before this pass on, uh, mm-hmm. kind of regressed a little bit this year, and just you know, he pretty much same role, same playing time. It's just you know, sacks are very sticky. So uh, hopefully, if he gets more playing time, we'll get more opportunities for sacks there uh, in Washington. So. 
I think that's kind of it. Um, unless there's any other names you see. None that I don't I think are worth talking about. Uh, I guess Burns in New York, you know, opposite came out. Bro, I think I'm excited for both of them, I guess. I wanted Burns to get a change of scenery out of Carolina just because I felt bad for the guy. And I felt like maybe he was playing a lot more deflated, you know, knowing that yeah. that team stinks versus, you know, the Giants, whether their roster on paper reflects it or not, there's similar to the Eagles. Like, there's always optimism surrounding the Giants, uh, right. you know, even despite their quarterback situation. So, I don't know. I think I think he'll be juiced up here to play next to Keelan. So, I don't love – I'm not, like, raising or lowering him because of landing with the Giants. Uh, same with Thibodeau. Like, they're pretty much staying where they are for me. I'm not yeah. – not huge reactions here. <laughs> yeah, it's more of a RIP Aziz Ojolari. Yeah. Uh, he, he's always been a healthy – player or all health dependent so like there's i mean obviously edge people are usually uh rotated to some extent so i would not yeah. be surprised if you know ojalari ends up playing 40 percent, 45 percent of snaps Good somehow ball. and then ends up with like six or seven sacks uh but yeah. best ball candidate at the end of a big best ball but any sort of dynasty or redraft value is gone totally yeah totally agree um all right, so I think that brings us to the end of the show here today, fine folks. We appreciate you listening and watching. Uh, you check out all the amazing content we're doing over there at idpguys.org. Sort of making the transition here into the idpplus.com website as well. So, um, you know, it's basically the same site. We're just working on transition name there. Uh, if you've been watching the whole, the whole way here on YouTube, we've had the code up. IDP plus sign pod for the uh, for the audio listeners. IDP plus pod gets you 10% off a subscription to get all the fine written content, all the full rankings access, super flex, mixed leagues, best in the business when it comes to mixed leagues and IDP rankings and analysis here. So we appreciate you uh, you giving us your, your time to share with us. So uh, you find me over at X, Dynasty Santa, and Matt, how about yourself? At M Record 21 there on X slash Twitter. All righty. Well, we'll talk to you guys soon. Keep checking out all the awesome content. We've had so many new faces coming and joining the team. It's been really great. Lots of great shows being put out for you guys by some of the best in the business here. So uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Peace out.